Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, there's actually some even more big heated up drama going on with Sony and Xbox going on right now, where now we're actually seeing even more big legal cases and even more big legal blocks in terms of what games are available on Xbox Game Pass and what games Sony's allowing on their own exact platform. Now, this has kind of been an ongoing brewing issue ever since the big legal case in Brazil has actually kind of came on out. And this is kind of tied into a lot more bigger issues too as well, which, well, is kind of just kind of slowly and slowly, slowly bolstering into a bigger and bigger issue. So I kind of want to talk about this because it seems like every single day, more and more and more information keeps on coming on out. And, well, at the end of the day, this is kind of a big, on the legal side, and as well, kind of a big issue. So we're going to talk about this in a pretty big in-depth and kind of, I want to hear your thoughts and comments down below. And as well, if any of you guys are brand new, make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on, as well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway. We also do have the How link down below for the Samsung monitor pre-order. Save a bunch of free money on that one. Link down below. Go check it out. out. Twitter and Twitch room down below. We also have the Target links too as well. And all, let's go dive into the video itself. So we have a, quite a bit of news in regards to both Sony, Xbox, and Xbox Game Pass. So, if you guys have kind of missed some of the news on this. Sony has actually been now accused by Xbox itself of now essentially paying off businesses or also trying their best to have a really hardcore contract to make it so certain individual games cannot be basically put on Xbox Game Pass, either as an exclusive or just being available in general on the platform itself. And this has kind of been kind of been blowing up a little bit more and more and more because now we're seeing another brand new game that is actually been kind of doing very, very well myself that I've heard about is now also on this huge block list. So I'm very, very intrigued on this and very, very kind of watchful eye on this one. So Sony once again has been accused of blocking another hit on Xbox Game Pass. So right now, millions of gamers subscribe to the Xbox Game Pass, with some even relying it as their primary place to play new releases, just for games in general. The subscription services library is con constantly changing with new titles being added monthly. However, not every game makes it onto the Xbox Game Pass. For one, although more and more previously console-exclusive titles have made their way onto PC in recent years, PlayStation games ends up on Steam, Epic Games Launcher, or Sony's competing subscription service, PlayStation Plus. So what about more about these mid-tier games, such as indie titles that belong to neither Sony nor Microsoft? And this is the kind of where the big drama starts happening. Well, according to Microsoft, Sony has been indulging in some anti-Game Pass tactics now over the years. The company has recently alleged that Sony has now paid indie developers to now keep their games off of Game Pass, thus keeping Sony at the top of the market. And according to a recent reveal, Sony has continued this practice by blocking one of the most newer indie hits from being incl included on Xbox's service. And now this is why it's even more intriguing. So as you guys have probably maybe heard, like I've mentioned this in a few videos, because I've heard very good things, especially from the Twitch folks, that Cult of the Lamb has been doing very, very well in the indie sense. Like a lot of people have been saying the game's been fantastic, a lot of games people have just been saying this game's been good. At the end of the day, it's been all around really nice. So Cult of the Lamb developers have now allegedly been paid off by Sony. Kind of crazy to hear this, because <laughs> I would have loved this game on Game Pass too. So the topic of Xbox Game Pass arose during a recent episode of the Kind of Funny Games podcast with host Blessing Adoya and writer and game industry writer Gary Whittup. Specifically, Adoya brought up the speculation surrounding the Death Stranding coming to Xbox Game Pass 2 as well. And we've kind of been hearing those rumors on this this past few, pretty much like 48 hours, I would say. And I still think that game's pretty good. And with the most recent Hideo Kojima announcement on the last Xbox conference, I can kind of see that being a thing. Because like typically a lot of people used to assume Kojima and PlayStation were kind of like, you know, like this. While now with Xbox, they're kind of going like this. So... It's going to be very intriguing to see. So the duo then explained that the biggest reason for their hesitancy towards this news was due to the recent reports of Sony being keen on preventing developers from putting games on Xbox Game Pass. They basically revealed that this practice is allegedly, as of right now, still going on, and that he was told the hit indie title Cult of the Lamb, which is the game that's been kind of popping off everywhere, is another game where Sony paid to incentivize the developer to not do any additional subscriber deals with competing platforms. Now, on kind of first glance, that does sound kind of bad, 
But at the end of the day, I'm actually... I'd have to see more or see more proper details and such like that. But, like, this is more so Sony just being like, just make it open for everyone. So at least in my mind, I don't think it's necessarily that bad. Now, if this is Game Pass, like, Game Pass obviously is a way more incentivized version because you just pay a lot less money than what the game would even cost overall. Like, you can literally go get the game for, like, basically save money and then also having the Game Pass after you beat the game as long as you're an avid gamer and beat it. So at the end of the day... I don't think it's necessarily too, too bad on Sony's end to more so want to maintain the market being open and let the gamers decide. But I'm kind of curious on how they incentivize it. Is it more of a financial incentivization? Is it more of like a platform like, hey, we'll put you on the most popular games, big releases, or how they did on Steam, where basically Steam had a huge, huge, like, you know, they had the pictures and thumbnails as soon as you launched the Steam platform. So I'm kind of curious because they're only saying, quote unquote, incentivized to not do additional deals. So why would you not kind of almost want to be like, hey, we can be on PlayStation? Uh, sure. Why not? I'm kind of down, like on the front page or whatever, and being promoted for more in organic sales. Sure, so I'm kind of very intrigued on this. So with PlayStation developing its own PC launcher, and Xbox from to be adding huge titles like Elden Ring to Game Pass in the future, it looks like the subscription service war is really just the beginning. Gamers who are interested in what's next for the company should be on the lookout for announcements from both parties at the upcoming Gamescom. The PlayStation brand has continually transformed over the last decades, becoming more of a major force in the gaming industry. From its early conception as a Nintendo-owned console, uh, if you guys are, we actually made a video on that if you guys want to search that up, to as well, it seems like they basically want to make sure this console is doing as best as they can. So it's very, very intriguing to go and see because they've been trying their best to go push into a lot of just stuff overall. This actually might be like a, another article for it, but uh, basically for that one, it's just intriguing to see on how big their foothold is. And as of right now, they push this into kind of like the number two spot. And this has been a big argument in the whole legal case where a lot of this is into Xbox is going to become a monopoly with Game Pass, with everything else. And to Sony being like, hey, we're doing okay, but they have Microsoft money. But as you guys have, may have had a chance to see in most recent filings, because we made a video on it, Xbox One basically sold around half as many in comparison to both the Switch and PS4, which kind of goes once again to show that it's kind of the underdog in the gaming universe. But when they have the Microsoft money and investments to keep on going and pushing into these games, it leads into this kind of crazy back and forth. Now, at this point, I do not think that Xbox Game Pass is a monopoly. I actually think it's a nice kind of thing to go and incentivize competition with both Nintendo and PlayStation to make their features better, their games better, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, PlayStation does not have that huge, almost endless amount of money that Microsoft has. It's a very, very big back and forth, and which is why this legal case is so intriguing. So, do you guys think it's smart, or good, or even legal for them to want to go and push this? As I kind of mentioned, depending on the information, the amounts, and how, like, you know, hardcore they are, I don't think it's necessarily bad. I mean, because they're just trying to make it so it's still an, like, so for PlayStation themselves to make the market an open market, and kind of have a chance to go and develop everything they possibly can. In my mind, I don't think that's bad. In my mind, I think that's relatively, well good like i think we want to keep on maintaining this free market and it does kind of seem like xbox game pass could be taking a lot of that game share from both nintendo and playstation depending on how long and how much they can actually invest like imagine you get almost pretty much every big indie game exclusives on basically xbox game pass that does kind of take away a lot of merit from playstation both subscribers for ps plus ps now well that's gone but you know what i mean like the new ps deluxe and as well just normal players so it's very intriguing to see. But as well, we've also kind of been still seeing kind of bad news where some big indie games such as Hades and other big games are actually finally leaving Game Pass 2 with their subscription going away. So uh, some of the best games are actually leaving as of August 31st with Elite Dangerous, Hades, Myst, NBA, uh, The Signs of Soul of uh, Two Point Hospital, 12 Minutes, which is actually a very, very, very good game. Spare for Horror, very good game. Remains of Edith Fitch, good game. And World War Z. So it's kind of crazy because while we're seeing so much big drama of these games being blot, like I said, I don't think it necessarily seems that bad at the end of the day. So kind of give me your thoughts on this big legal case, because we're going to keep on seeing more and more and more as time goes on, especially as Brazil courts keep on giving out more information. But it's insane to go and see this because, well, 
It's kind of going back and forth quite a bit. <laughs> it's all up to the court to go and decide. So give me your thoughts. Give me your comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway. Amazon links down below. Twitter and Twitch stream down below. We also have the how links as we keep on mentioning for all the sales going on down below too as well. And of course the target links you just want to check out and see for that one because we've had a lot of folks still getting their consoles from all of that. Appreciate you guys all so much for everything. And I love you guys all to bits.